Welcome back creators! In this tutorial we will be masking text, emojis and even vector shapes. Stay tuned! We open a new project and we create a new layer for our text. You can change your text layer's attributes in your properties. Next, I import an image from my library. Adjust the size to fit the canvas. And I extend that layer for the duration of our animation. Now we focus on trim. This attribute will make your text disappear or appear in your timeline. In this case, I applied the trim from 0% to 100%. I add more frames into the timeline to go from 100% to 0% trim. You can also modify the color of your text in the animation as shown. You can see that it goes from black to white and back to black. Alright, now we can use the image that we imported at the beginning. Make sure that the image is above the text layer. Open your layer properties and click toggle mask the one with the arrow pointing down. And just like that, your text is masked. You can see that if you move the background, you can see through it. You can continue experimenting with your text and background for some awesome effects. You can also choose an emoji and apply the mask as well. In this case, we choose an emoji that the silhouette is very definitive. You want an emoji that the silhouette is very descriptive since the inside of that emoji will not be shown. Don't forget that this effect can be animated, making our emojis a little more versatile. You also have the option to invert the mask effect. Now I'm going to do something a little bit different. I'm going to design a clock utilizing the text layer. I chose a typography with the roundest text because I want the clock to look like a clock. Futura font will do. Once I have the outer layer of the clock, I move into the middle circle and adjust the thickness in it. I started filling up the clock with our numbers. I'll extend all the frames in the timeline. This is for animation purposes only. Now we import our image for the masking. We keep importing the image to every single layer in the timeline. This will ensure that our numbers are all masked. For this next step, we use the vector layer to create the hands of the clock. A simple triangle and a rectangle will do. Once I have both of them, I merge them. Next, I position the pivot point in the center circle. This is where the rotation axis for the hands is located. Now you can animate the little hands one by one. You can rotate the little hands all that you want and it will be registered in your timeline. The good thing is that you don't have to do it over and over. That's what I call efficiency. You can speed it up or slow it down. You can see the revolutions on the screen above. 
You can modify your clock with different vector shapes. You can add color to create cool effects. Always experiment with the tools at hand and you will be amazed at what you can create. These clocks remind me of a watch that I used to wear back in the 80s. A pop swatch watch with interchangeable belts. I hope you find this short tutorial helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks for watching.